So you butchered your chicken and you're like, what do I do with it now? Luckily for you, you've got a few options. I'm gonna cover two different ways that you can get the chicken in the freezer today. First method is gonna be to get this chicken in the freezer whole. This is the cheaper of the two methods that I'm gonna show you. And also it's a little bit less labor intensive. So you're gonna to need to order a package of shrink wrap bags. You can find them on Amazon for like 25 to $30. I'll link the ones that I use below. I already have this chicken in a shrink wrap bag just because I needed to put it in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna reuse this bag. Make sure it's good and dry. So next we are going to put this chicken in head down. We're gonna take this little tube that comes in the kit and put it in the cavity of the chicken. We're gonna leave a little bit of this sticking out of the bag. So now we're gonna take the zip tie that comes with it, spin it around a couple times, and secure it just not so tight that you can't get the tube out later. So next I've got a pot of really hot water here. We're gonna submerge this whole chicken, leaving the straw out for about five seconds or so. You can see on my pot here, this has been deemed the chicken pot. As you submerge this, the plastic will shrink down around the chicken. All right, pull it out and you're gonna let it sit for 10 seconds. Okay, now we're gonna pull the straw out, tighten the zip tie, cut the plastic and the zip tie, and you have a perfectly shrink wrapped chicken. So you wanna let this bird cool down, then cool it in the refrigerator, then put it in the freezer. So that way your freezer doesn't get too hot all at once. Your next way that you can freeze your chicken is by just freezing it in the different cuts of meat. This way does take a little bit longer and it's a little more labor intensive, but if you don't have a whole lot of freezer space, this is the way to go. So let's talk about how to cut up a whole chicken. Right, so I'm gonna bring you over from my point of view. So please keep in mind that our birds are skinned because we don't have a plucker and this is just our preference to make it go faster. So I figured that having it skinned would probably make it be a little bit easier for this demonstration. So it's gonna look a little different than your chicken, but we're gonna start with the legs. I'm gonna peel the leg over to the side and you can eventually pop this little bone out. This is the hip joint and you're gonna cut just on the other side of it. There should be a space where you can cut that off. Easy peasy. So now we're gonna take off the wings. We accidentally dislocated this joint whenever we uh, were butchering this chicken, but you can do the same thing where you pull the wing back. And you'll be able to feel this little shoulder joint right here. So you can see the line of the breast and it's just butts up right to it. So you can see right here where this bone met with this bone, we're cutting the space in between. Same thing on the other side. So now we are gonna go ahead and take out the spine. You can use this for making broth. So we're gonna flip it over to its side and you can see this line of fat right here. This is the line we're gonna follow. And kitchen shears definitely make this easier. You're just gonna cut along the line. You feel a little resistance, that's the ribs. Go ahead and keep cutting through it. Same thing on the other side. Now 
Now, just gonna break this off. That is for stock. That is the backbone. So we're gonna break down these legs just a little bit more. So same thing here. We've got the thigh and the drumstick. So we're gonna follow this line right in between them. Pop this joint out. You can see right here, that space between these two bones. You have drumstick and thigh. We're gonna separate our two breasts. So you're gonna flip it over. You can feel the top of the bone right here. So you're just gonna make a little cut in there. It doesn't have to be super deep, but that's just gonna help us break the bone and separate them. Flip it over, give it a good push down, and you hear that break. Now, you've got this broken bone right here, and you should be able to cut right down the middle. Then you can just basically fillet this bone out off the back side. You have a boneless, skinless chicken breast. So here we have eight pieces of chicken and quite honestly, our broilers get so big that we can cut our chicken breasts in half or even thirds and that can make a meal for the three of us. So now that you've got your cuts, we've got to get them in the freezer. Most definitely just use regular freezer Ziploc bags, but they will get freezer burnt pretty quick. So this is where we insert Greg. This is my newest kitchen tool. And I think he's gonna be a workhorse. So this is a food saver vacuum sealer. And I got one that can seal on the dry and wet food function. So that way sealing meat and things like that shouldn't be a problem. And I'm gonna be testing him out for the first time today. So. I'm gonna make my first bag. So we're gonna put the roll in here, lift up the cutter bar, and pull this down and under. It says to pull the bag out enough that'll hold your item that's gonna be vacuum sealed plus three inches. My breast here, two of these plus three inches, that looks about good. And yes, I wash my hands between steps. I just don't figure you want to see that. So we're gonna cut. We have a bag. So here we have the roll storage. This is where you cut the roll. And this is the drip tray to catch anything that may drip. So we are gonna put the end of this bag across the ceiling strip right here. Close it up and go to operate. Now we're going to seal. All right. Open this back up. Hey, we've got a bag. All right. All right. Let's put some chicken in. a little bit too big but this is my test run so we've got chicken breasts in place so we're gonna place the top of the bag in this little drip tray and we're gonna close and turn to operate let's vacuum seal we're gonna turn this to the moist option we're gonna vacuum Now it's sealing automatically. Ha <laughs> We have vacuum sealed chicken. I feel so fancy. So I made the bag just a little bit too big, but I wasn't, you know, like I said, this was my test run. I did not prepare for this video. I didn't even read the instructions. So highly recommend if you can invest in one of these, this is gonna be awesome. I'm going to use this thing all the time. All right, let's vacuum seal some more chicken. 
I've come to realize that being an adult is basically just getting excited about new appliances. You get a, a vacuum sealer for the kitchen, you're like, yes. You get a new vacuum, you're like, yes. Mine did come with some pre-made bags, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use those on these smaller pieces of chicken. Two thighs and two wings. Now I have seen some comments about doing wet food items like meat in these causing a fail in the seal. My chicken is pretty dry, so I didn't have any issues with that. This thing is cool beans. Oh yeah, Greg is gonna definitely be a workhorse in our kitchen. So far, first impression, I love it. You see how much flatter this is going to freeze instead of this? The freezer is definitely prime real estate. We cannot have things that are not important that don't have to be freezed in the freezer. They'll have to be frozen, frozen. So those are two of your options for what to do with your chicken after you get it butchered. Another way that you can store your chicken in the freezer is by cooking it first like batch cooking and then freeze that and it's already cooked and ready to go. But I don't think it'll last quite as long as if you do it this way. So another option that you can do for storing your chicken long term is can it. Now that's going to be the next video that I add to this chicken processing series. Basically the things you can do to help you take your chicken from yard to table. If you want to check out that series I've made a playlist for it and you can find that here.